It will be awesome. <clears throat>
The request of Epic Holdings LLC for a conditional use permit to allow development in the 100 year flood fringe and a conditional use permit to allow excavation and or fill in the floodway for 1 4th Street South. Okay, can I get a motion to open the public hearing? Motion to open. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, Robin. Thank you, Chair Matson. Um, for this item, I did place some additional materials um, at your place at your, at your seats. Uh, two maps, or excuse me, the floodplain map, and then uh, a site plan, and then also a, an elevation of the proposed parking garage. Epic Holdings is requesting two conditional use permits for 1 4th Street South. Uh, the first CUP is to allow the development in the 100-year uh, flood fringe, which is also known as the floodplain. And then uh, CUP number two is to allow excavation and or fill in the floodway. The city is in the process of selling a portion of this parcel to Epic Holdings and on March 25th, the City of Council also approved a Renaissance Zone property tax exemption for this project and to further the community's long-term economic vitality through creation of additional housing units downtown and jobs. Uh, the five-story mixed-use project with underground parking will be built entirely within the floodplain, but we felt because it's budding right up to the floodway line that we are requiring that second conditional use permit in case they disturb the fill. If they do happen to disturb the fill, they have to bring it back to original condition and provide a no rise certification, um, which would be a condition of approval. Um, the garage will be flood proofed and built to a 44 foot flood protection elevation, which is the same um, as our city levies. Staff is suggesting that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the conditional use permits um, and the related findings of fact contingent upon the five uh, conditions listed on pages 14 and 15 of your packet. Um, two public comments were received yesterday. One comment was really geared towards the project in general, had some questions about parking. Um, our representative from Downtown Moorhead, Inc. Uh, responded to that email and we haven't heard back if she had any additional questions. Um, and then the other comment was regarding development in the floodplain and um, staff put, an, uh, put together an answer um, relating to those questions and she, um, she didn't have any, or she didn't get back to me so I would assume we answered her questions. Um, is the applicant here? I, oh, sorry, there you are. The applicant is in the audience uh, if you have any questions, as well as the city's floodplain engineer if you wanted to ans uh, ask any technical questions. Um, that includes my comments. Thank you, Robin. Um, I just want to clarify what it is that we're here to discuss tonight, and there are two issues before us as I understand it. The first issue is the condition conditional use uh, permit to build in the floodplain is that accurate yes and then the second one has to do with um, making sure that the um, if there are any if there's any land or ground disturbed during the excavation and building that that's replaced so that there's no um, there's no uh, reduced flood protection in that area due to the construction is that accurate as well that is correct those two items okay thank you um, would the applicant like to address the commission? Good afternoon, uh, commissioners. Uh, Brian Pattengill with Houston Engineering representing the owners. Um, we'll be doing the technical work and the civil site development for the project. Um, as uh, Robin stated, that we do have two permits here at this point, one for development in the floodplain slash floodway fringe, and then uh, the additional CUP for work in the floodway. Um, if you guys have seen the site plan, which I believe you have an attachment to it, the building is basically a, directly adjacent to the floodway. Um, so we are likely to experience some excavation in the floodway. Um, and part of federal regs and a lot of associated regulations require us to basically no fill in that. And that's to preserve the, essentially not raise the water levels during flood events. 
We anticipate we will be in there doing some excavation work simply because of the excavation requirements to construct the building and the footings. The intent is afterwards to basically put it back exactly the way it was before so there will be no net change in the volume of the floodway or the general elevations. Um, we'll be providing no rise certificates as part of that after completion of the work. Obviously, we can't really do that just yet since we haven't designed the building yet. Um, additionally, as Robin mentioned, the building is, this will be designed to FEMA standards for flood proofing. Um, and the owner is aware that the building will be in the floodplain still technically, but the building itself will be flood proofed. Essentially, that will involve constructing the foundation walls similar to a similar height as the city of Moorhead's flood protection. Um, so it'll basically just sort of be a flood wall or something like that. It's a building foundation essentially. Um, so we'll take precautions such as waterproofing, utility penetrations into the foundations as part of our standard design. Structural engineers will be reviewing it based on the loadings you expected um, in that regard. Uh, so we're taking, and we've worked with this stuff before in different projects as far as flood proofing goes. So we've had experience with this. Um, so yes, it's kind of an odd position to put a building in, but we think it's perfectly acceptable as far as the engineering challenges can be easily overcome with just a little bit of creativity. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. In regards to technical stuff, the building op, the building itself, um, layouts and stuff are still a little bit in flux. So if there's questions like that, I'd have to defer to the owner um, for additional information. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Patton? I just have one comment. So since you're fairly confident that you're going to be excavating within the, the, the flooded, the flood zone? Yes. What level of comfortability do you have that you'll be able to achieve the compaction with, you know, in case, God forbid, the water ever get that high? But if it does, once you disturb earth. We'll be looking at that as far as a undermining the footings as we'll be reviewing that. Um, luckily, we're kind of protected by the adjacent bridge abutments, so we're really outside the main flow paths of the water. So we shouldn't, we don't expect to see very high erosive velocities along where the building is, but we will be evaluating scour essentially the same way you would a bridge yeah. abutment for scour underneath the bridge abutment to make sure that the foundations are sufficiently protected. Perfect. Um, with that. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Mr. Patton. Thank you. Uh, Robin, you said who else is here? The um, the city's flood floodplain <clears throat> engineer, and that it would be uh, Andrea. <laughs> Andrea, I, get, I I get her name wrong because okay. she's got two last names. Crabtree, is it Nays? Okay, apologize. That's okay. Does anyone um, on the commission have any questions for Andrea? No questions for Andrea. Would you like to be on the TV tonight? No, thanks. Okay. No questions for Andrea. Okay. I'm just going to look at my checklist. Okay. Citizens to be heard on the two issues of the conditional use permits. So if you filled out one of these, now's your time. Um, we're going to ask you to come up to the podium and say your name and address. And please try to keep your remarks to three minutes and on the topic that we're discussing tonight. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Arnie Kuhn. I'm the president of the uh, Riverside Condo Association. We are the closest neighbor to this site, directly across the railroad tracks to the south. Uh, we have nine residential units there, as you probably are aware, a parking garage, and then a commercial strip of three units. <clears throat> and obviously, we're in favor of downtown housing. We live there. Um, and several of our owners and uh, residents are here. Uh, we have a, an interest in what's happening uh, adjacent to us, obviously, and several questions that I don't know if they've been addressed yet, so I'll ask them and let you flesh them out however you'd like. Um, we are uh, curious about uh, the construction. Our building at 114th Street South is engineered out of the floodplain. We are not required to carry flood insurance, and I assume this is the goal of this particular project also, I would assume. <clears throat> and. Uh, that site is now a parking site and it's kind of low and kind of not really an attractive site. So I assume it's going to look better after a project goes in. Um, we are a little bit confused by the schedule of uh, things in terms of when the public input is and what information is made available to the public. <clears throat> Excuse me, including the two changes that you uh, introduced here tonight in terms of what does it look like what is the pr 
parking garage look like? Where's the access and egress? Uh, that section of 4th Street is a little bit congested as you come around the corner there in terms of uh, narrowing down to a fairly narrow 4th Street there as it approaches the, the light. So we've got some concerns on traffic, but uh, we're not necessarily adamant about that. We'd like to know a little more about the project. Another question, is there any special assessment district anticipated for adjacent properties? Um, and is there any impact to adjacent properties from the groundwork and work that's going to be done there, including the railroad property, which is adjacent to us and uh, often is uh, uh, a site where snow is piled up, so forth and so on. So those are our, our major interests and concerns, and we'd just like to have a little bit more information on those items. Thank you. Sure. Um, thank you for coming tonight, and thank you for, can, oh, Mr. Coons, is it? Can I have you come back just for a oh, second? okay. Um, I don't know if any of our other owners had other issues. They may want to speak also. But. That's okay. I just, well, I just wanted to just um, um, thank you for wh what you brought up. I don't know that we have these answers tonight, but I would like to be able to put you in touch with someone who um, can help you answer these questions if we can't do it here today okay um so i just want to make sure my email's on there my phone number's on there okay and so yes oh okay oh hi chris thank you um madam chair um planning commission to address stop address the questions I think you're right the the issue before you is limited to the CUP tonight the project has been approved by the council all those factors have been discussed maybe not decided completely I would suggest that we put the residents in contact with the developer and maybe they could have some com conversation and questions that seems to be the most appropriate at this point okay thank you very much okay so I have your email address and we will get you connected with who you need to talk to to get some answers for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other citizens who wish to be heard on this issue? Okay. It doesn't look like there are. So can I please get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing please signify by saying yes yes all those opposed please say no <clears throat> okay um, can I get a motion on the item chair Manson I would uh, move that we uh, approve the uh, request of epic holdings for the conditional use permit for the hundred year flood plain fringe and for the uh, exhumation and fill of the floodway for fourth street second Okay. Um, is there any discussion about the motion? You know, I, I went over there today and uh, I think this is, you know, I, I have no opinions on the building by the, on the, in, within the floodplain. I mean, we do that all the time. Uh, my only minor concern would be um, how it will affect Third Street, it's pretty close to Third Street, and so when they're doing the excavation and all that, is that going to cause any traffic problems on the downside close to the river? But, you know, that's not something we're dealing with tonight. So um, as far as I'm concerned, I think, I think we are, um, I don't really think there's really a whole lot else to talk about with this, in my opinion. Anybody else have anything else? Okay, great. Can uh, all those in favor of the motion please signify by saying yes. yes 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 all those opposed please say no okay the motion passes thank you very much okay uh item number three request of the city of moorhead for text amendments to title 10 chapter 18 of the moorhead city code use regulations churches religious institutions group assembly and residential commercial and light industrial districts um are we having a public hearing on this or are we tabling um because we advertise the public hearing mm -hmm. you can open it mm -hmm. and then just not close it and then we would table it and bring it back and re-advertise it just in case anyone came um 
because it was advertised, okay. um, I would recommend that you at least open the public hearing. Okay. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? Motion to open. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please signify by saying yes. Yes. All those opposed, please say no. And Robin. Thank you, Chairperson Matson. Um, as I mentioned in my staff report, um, we're requesting this item be tabled until a future planning commission meeting to allow more uh, analysis and review. Um, this is one of those items that um, you basically, the, you open the proverbial can of worms and um, every time I look at it, I find something new that, because um, my, my first intent was somebody called and asked if they could establish a church in a, I think it was RC, resident, a regional commercial, and our chart, our use table says they can't. Well, that's unusual. So then I started looking at the use table and I found some other irregularities and we could have just fixed the use table, but then there's all these other things that go with it, with definitions. And so the, the church religious uses are mentioned throughout our zoning ordinance. So um, we're gonna take some more time to gather all of those changes together. Um, the city attorney needs to have time to review it and then we'll bring it back. And um, you know, depending on if our flood situation you know, um, we're you know, knock on wood um, in good shape. We could, I should be able to bring something back for uh, the next meeting. So we could just table it and then discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. I guess just a quick question, Robin. Is just a, is that just because of use or is that just because of hazard? Um, essentially, there is a federal law. It's the Religious Land Use and Institutional Persons Act that cities are required to comply with and. Um, religious uses are to be treated the same as assembly uses in our our current use table there's some inconsistencies so and it's nothing controversial it's just a matter of discussing um, like right now churches are permitted as conditional uses in residential districts they should most likely just be permitted uses in our commercial districts they're not currently permitted in industri industrial but they probably could be permitted in um, light industrial. So that's just a discussion. Um, so those are corrections. And then s different sections of the zoning ordinance have mentions of like for parking, um, uh, conditional uses. Um, and then also our ordinance mentions churches. Well, a more updated, you could either say religious institutions or places of worship. So that was something else I was looking at um, updating in our language as well. Um, we just need a little more time to work on it. Okay. Ben, did you have a question? I do not. Okay. Um, is there anyone, are there any citizens who wish to be heard on this issue? No? Okay. So at this time, I'm going to ask for a, uh, am I asking for a motion to table the public hearing? Is that yes. what I'm doing? Okay. Can I get a motion to table the public hearing, please? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, this does not require discussion per my cheat sheet. So, uh, all those in favor of tabling the public hearing, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion passes. Is there any other business before the commission tonight? Uh, Chairperson Matson, um, in your packet, uh, staff included the 2018 annual development report just as an informational item. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, Christy is here um, if you wanted to ask. And then the other thing was um, I had sent you an email on Monday and this was also an informational item. Um, the Metrocog is looking at uh, projects out past 2020. So we're looking at um, ideas for studies and plans and just in-house we discussed um, it'll be time so probably starting 2020-2021 to um, uh, update our comprehensive plan because it'll be about a 10-year uh, period since the last time we did it um, so that was a suggestion so if any of you have any ideas just send them my way and um, I'll pass those along to staff and we could um, consider them I do actually have a, um, a question about the annual development report um, where can I find this on the website outside of this packet so I can share it with other people? 
Christy, do you know if it has a, a home on the internet somewhere? Because it's really, really great, and I'd love to share it with more people. Thank you, Chair Matson. I'm not sure if it is online, but I will talk to a member of our economic development team to see if we can maybe get it put somewhere on the website. And I'm very happy to hear that you enjoyed it. I think it's great, and I think more people should see it. OK, uh, any other reports or information? I do not have anything else. All right, then we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning this meeting, please say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Let's go home. <laughs>